Hi everyone, I'm William Smith, a Partner Program Manager here at JAMP, and today we're going to talk about modernizing our toolbox. This webinar is an update to the first one I presented in November 2019, two and a half years ago. Back then, I was hoping to explain that imaging is dead and that the days of network-booted, monolithic, golden master workflows were over. If you haven't heard, imaging is still dead. I realize some of you are new to Mac management, and you're probably coming from the Windows world where imaging is still alive and well. So let's recap why it's dead for Mac OS. It all has to do with security. In particular, it's about protecting the integrity of the Mac OS at boot, installation, and during use. To enforce this protection, Apple has chosen to fully control the integration between their hardware and their operating system. They can do that because they make both. The T2 chip shipped with the first iMac Pro and later with the Mac Mini, MacBook Pro, and MacBook Air. One of its duties was to ensure the lowest levels of the Mac OS weren't tampered with and that only trusted operating system software loaded at startup. If the integrity of the Mac OS was found compromised at boot time, the Mac would boot into Mac OS Recovery and launch the Boot Recovery Assistant to install a fresh operating system. Secure boot on today's Apple Silicon Macs is handled by the M1 chip. At the time of installing macOS, these chips verify the integrity of the installer and the integrity of the installation process. System Integrity Protection, or SIP, which has been around since 2015, prevents users and administrators from modifying the operating system and essential files. We can turn off SIP today. However, that's a really, really bad idea because when the macOS is vulnerable to attacks, it can be compromised. Wisely, Apple prevents disabling SIP programmatically and requires booting to the Recovery HD first, something a human can do sitting in front of the computer, but not malware. And as of macOS Catalina, released in 2019, Apple partitions your hard drive into a read-only Macintosh HD with nothing but the macOS operating system itself and a writable Macintosh HD data partition for the applications you add, your settings, and your user data. This is the same design iPhones and iPads use, and it's what makes them easy to erase and start over quickly. It's these enhancements to Apple security that have eliminated traditional imaging. Traditional imaging uses disk-level block copy to install an operating system and offers no way for the hardware to verify the OS at the file level which is why imaging is dead today. Now that we have some context for why we're not imaging, here's what we're going to talk about. First, we need an installer. Apple always wants us to start with one of their installers, not something we've crafted together with additional applications and settings. Next, we need to identify supported Macs. Apple does a great job making new versions of Mac OS compatible with older hardware, but how far back can we go? Once we have an installer and know which Macs will support it, we'll need to get it to them and get it ready. The reinstall magic happens with a simple command that has several options. We'll look at those. And finally, we'll look at a new Mac OS Monterey feature called Erase All Content and Settings, which may just make webinars like today a thing of the past. Before we begin, for those of you new to Jamf, here's a quick summary of what we do. Jamf is helping organizations succeed with Apple. It's our customers who've helped us become the leader in Apple Enterprise Management, with 77% rating Jamf Pro, Jamf Connect, and Jamf Protect 5 out of 5 stars in reviews. Our average rating across G2, Captera, TrustRadius, and Gartner Peer Insights is 4.7. And in the area of security, Jamf Protect is a top performer on Captera's short list of endpoint protection solutions. Jamf helps more than 60,000 organizations manage 26 million plus Apple devices and counting. When the enterprise needs the world leader in Apple management, they turn to Jamf. The world's largest banks, tech companies, most valuable brands, and largest companies choose Jamf for Apple management. All right, let's get started. 
First, we need an installer. Apple always wants us to start with one of their installers, not a golden master image that we can block copy. The straightforward way to get today's Mac OS Monterey installer is to open the App Store on any Mac and download it from there. And then you can use something like a USB drive or AirDrop to copy it to other Macs. But have you noticed what happens when you copy it? It takes a really, really long time to open. It seems to bounce forever in the dock, and a couple of minutes later it just stops. But if you're patient and keep waiting, you'll eventually see the Monterey installer will open. And when I timed this on my test MacBook Air, it took almost four minutes to open. Not only does Apple want you to reinstall from their installer, they also seem to want you to acquire the installer in an approved way. In other words, when you launch an installer that's not directly downloaded from Apple, macOS is going to check every piece of it, and that's going to take time, even if you call the installer from the command line. So what else can you do? Since macOS Catalina, we've been able to use the software update command. It lives in the hidden USR SBIN directories. This is the command line equivalent of the software update pane in System Preferences. It can do most everything you see here, plus some additional cool features. If I open Terminal and simply enter software update, like this or just by itself, and then press return, I get the usage page. You'll see a long list of arguments we can add to the software update command. For now, I want to show you these three. One of them wasn't available to us for our last webinar back in 2019. With the new listful installers argument, we no longer need to guess which macOS versions Apple still has available. We just enter the software update command, followed by dash dash listful installers, and we see a long list going all the way back to macOS High Sierra. Now, for those of you playing at home, you might be trying this and noticing your list isn't nearly as full as mine. That's because you may be running this command on newer hardware like Apple Silicon Macs. If that's the case, you're only seeing what your Mac will support. And here, specifically, we see the versions of Mac OS we can download. Let's get the latest version of Monterey. First, let's clear the window. The software update command requires we use sudo to elevate our privileges. This is only because it'll download the macOS installer into the Applications folder, just like the App Store would do, and that requires admin privileges. I'll add the argument to fetch a full macOS installer. Apple no longer offers updates, just full installers, which average about 12 gig for Big Sur and Monterey. Then I'll specify the full installer version I want, in this case, 12.3.1. After contacting Apple, my Mac starts the download, and we wait. This took my Mac about 15 minutes to download, but times will vary with different networks and the speeds of your hardware. As I said a little bit ago, you'll find the installer appears in the Applications folder ready to go. And because we downloaded directly from Apple, it'll open in seconds instead of minutes. In a little while, we'll talk about possibly using this command from Jamf Pro to tell our Macs to go download their own Monterey installers. Now I want to show you one more way to get the installers. Armin Briegel created a wonderfully simple app called Download Full Installer, and it does exactly what the name says. You can visit his GitHub page at github.com slash scripting OSX or scripting OS X and then click into his download full installer repository. To the right of the page, locate the link to the latest build and download the zip file. As of today, it's version 1.1. When you open the app, you get a list of available Big Sur and Monterey installers. Just click the download button next to the version you want and wait for it to download. And when it's done, you get a package? Yes, this is effectively what Apple's own software update command is downloading. 
it's connecting to the same software catalogs. If you were to go one step further and double click it, it would nearly instantaneously put the Monterey installer into the applications folder. But what makes this really intriguing is it's a prepackaged installer suitable for uploading to a Jamf Pro distribution point. That means no more having to package the installer ourselves. We'll talk more about this later. So we have a few ways to get an installer that we can deploy to our Macs. We can download one from the App Store, but we would have to repackage it, and it's going to have a few minute delay when we launch it the first time, because the Mac's going to run it through a verification process. I don't recommend doing this. The software update command is really useful because it shows us a list of available updates going back to High Sierra and multiple versions of Catalina, Big Sur, and Monterey. This is one we could actually run on our Macs to tell them to get their own installers. But for those of you who just want something simple, you can't beat Armin's download full installer app to get a prepackaged Mac OS installer ready to upload to Jamf Pro. We're not short of options. Now that we have an installer, what next? Before we deploy it to our Macs, we need to know which ones can even install it. So long as a Mac meets the minimum hardware requirements and has enough free storage, about double the size of the installer, which is 12 gigs, you can install Mac OS Monterey. Even my seven-year-old early 2015 MacBook Air with just four gigs of memory supports Monterey. Let's make a smart group in Jamf Pro to do this. In Jamf Pro, I'll navigate to Computers and Smart Groups and click the New button. I'll name my new smart group Mac OS Monterey Compatible Max. Note that I'm naming it for exactly what it's going to contain. Macs that meet the general and hardware requirements for installing Monterey. For my criteria, I'll start by adding general requirements from Apple's knowledge base. The 2013 Mac Pro is the oldest hardware that'll run Monterey, and with a little googling, I found it originally shipped with OS X Mavericks, 10.9.1, but none of my Macs are running anything earlier than High Sierra, 10.13. I'll set the operating system version in my smart group to greater than or equal to 1013. And that means I can set my boot drive available to 26 gigs or 26,624 meg. So what about the hardware requirements? Apple's knowledge base listed minimum requirements for every Mac model, but to identify those Macs in Jamf Pro, we need to use their model identifiers. That lets us pinpoint very specific Mac models. However, Monterey is compatible with more than 50 unique Mac models. That's more than 50 unique model identifiers. Can you imagine how long it would take to create a smart group of more than 50 model identifiers like this one? Probably at least an hour. Fortunately, Jamf Pro supports regular expressions, or regex for short, Instead of typing more than 50 pieces of criteria into a smart group, we can replace all that with one regular expression like this that matches the model identifiers we need. Regular expressions are beyond what we can cover here today. If you're not familiar with how to create them, search Jamf Nation to see if somebody else has already done that for you. I put this one together, but don't worry about trying to write it down. I'll include it in my resources at the end of the webinar. In Jamf Pro, I'll add the model identifier criterion and set my operator to matches regex. Then I'll paste in my regular expression and save my smart group. In addition to my smart group for identifying Monterey compatible Macs, I'm going to make one more. This one's going to identify all Macs where I already have the install Mac OS Monterey app placed into the applications folder. I don't need to download a copy to a Mac that already has it. My criteria identifies the app installer by name, install Mac OS Monterey app, and identifies its version. I got the version from its Get Info window in the Finder. Later, when Apple releases Monterey 12.4, 12.5, etc., I'll be able to update the app version here, and all my Macs will get the new installer. Be sure to note, 
The installer app's version number is different from the Mac OS version number. For example, 17.3.03 of the installer app installs Mac OS Monterey 12.3. To recap, review Apple's hardware and storage requirements for installing Mac OS Monterey. I'll include the support article again at the end of this webinar. You create two smart computer groups. The first will identify all the Macs in your fleet that meet Apple's hardware and storage requirements. The second one will identify whether each Mac has the installer app cached to its applications folder ready to run. And remember, when you're looking for the version of the installer, it's not the same version of the Mac OS Monterey you want to install. Now that we've made a smart group to identify Monterey compatible Macs, and another one to identify Macs that have the current Monterey installer, we'll use those for scoping policies. We have a few ways to get an installer, and we need to know which machines need the installer. Let's talk about getting the installer to them. We'll look at two ways of doing this. You decide which works better for you. The first is if you want to deploy the installer from your distribution point, and the other is if you want to tell your Macs to get the installer themselves. Here, we have the internet on the left, separated from our internal network on the right by a DMZ in the middle. Some of you may be back in the office or in school buildings after COVID-19. If you have an internal file share distribution point, you'll probably want your client computers to download the Monterey installer from there. This way, your computers aren't saturating your internet connection with 12 gig files. If you also have remote workers or students, you'll either need to install a web distribution point in your DMZ and sync it from your principal distribution point, or Jamf Cloud customers can take advantage of the Jamf Cloud distribution service on the internet and serve home users from there while serving internal network users from the internal file share. If your organization's internet connection is robust enough or you're not concerned about saturating your bandwidth, you can simply serve everything from Jamf Cloud. For this, I'll take the install assistant package that I got with the download full installer app that I mentioned earlier and upload it to either Jamf Admin or directly through Jamf Pro itself if I'm using a Jamf Cloud distribution point. I've clearly increased the video speed here. The package is 12 gigs, and it will take a while to upload. If you can, do this on a wired network. If you work from home, consider plugging into your cable modem or internet connection directly. Once I have the install assistant package in Jamf Pro, I'll create a new policy to deploy it. It'll be a little different from what I'd do for a normal policy. I'll name it Cache Mac OS Installer App to Applications. In other words, all I'm doing is putting the macOS installer app into the applications folder to run later. I'll set the trigger to run at recurring check-in and the frequency to ongoing. Now, why ongoing instead of just once? Remember, the package is about 12 gigs. Depending on the computer's network, it's going to take a while to download, possibly up to 30 minutes or more. During that time, the end user could close the laptop lid restart the computer, or move between networks. Any of those will interrupt the download. I need the policy to keep trying until it succeeds, and I can control that with my scoping. I'll add the install assistant package to my policy, just like any other app package that I deploy. And then I'll scroll down to the maintenance payload, and make sure I update inventory immediately after the installer gets cached into the Applications folder. That way, Jamf Pro knows the computer has received it. In my scoping, I'll set my targets to the smart group we created earlier that identifies my Macs eligible to install Monterey. Those are the computers with enough disk space and meet Apple's hardware requirements. But there's no reason to cache them to those Macs that already have it, so I'll exclude them using the other smart group we created that identifies those computers. A policy like this is great for desktop computers like iMacs in a lab, 
because they'll probably be hardwired and won't move between networks. But many of us have to support off-network portable computers. Employees may be working from home, or students may be attending classes from home. If you have a cloud distribution point like Jamf Cloud, or you host your own in your organization's DMZ, you can still deploy the Install Assistant package to cache the Monterey installer. Or you could use that software update command we've talked about earlier. I'm going to disable the new policy I just created. That lets me keep it. If I need it for later, all I need to do is uncheck Enabled and Save. Now, I can clone the policy to give myself a head start for making the other one. I'll change the name slightly to Download and Cache, and I'll delete the copy at the end. And I'll be sure to enable this one. I'll leave the trigger at recurring check-in and the frequency at ongoing, just like the other policy. But I'll remove the package and then scroll down the list of payloads to the Files and Processes payload. Here, I'm going to enter that software update command to fetch the full installer and tell it that I want 12.3.1. And notice, I'm still keeping the maintenance payload to update inventory once the installer is downloaded. And I'll keep the same scope. We'll still target eligible Macs, but exclude those that already have the installer waiting in the Applications folder. That's it. Let's go back to the Policies list and look at these. I'm going to filter for both my Monterey policies and click the disclosure triangles next to each so that I can compare them. Except for a couple of small differences, they're identical, and either will accomplish getting the installer delivered to my computers. Again, the one with the package is ideal for on-premises computers pulling from on-premises distribution points. The one with the command is probably better for remote off-network computers. There's a big drawback, though, to either of these policies. They'll take 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or more to run, depending on the computer's network speed. During that time, no other policies can run. That's also plenty of time for the end user to close their laptop, restart the computer, or change networks, and break this policy. So what do we do? I've created a script for you. I'm going to open a new Safari tab and go to GitHub where I posted the script in my gists. It's called Download macOS Monterey in Background. You'll find all the instructions for using it at the top, but I'll show you here. I'm going to click the raw button to show nothing but the script. That makes it easy for me to select all and copy. Back in Jamf Pro, I'll go to Settings and scroll down to Scripts. I'll start a new script called Download Mac OS Monterey in Background. Under the Script tab, I'll paste what I copied from GitHub. Under the Options tab, I'm going to give labels to parameters 4 through 6. Mac OS version, organization name, and organization domain name. That's it. Now I save. Now I'll go to Computers and Policies and start a new policy. I'll give the policy the same name as my script. Download Mac OS Monterey in Background. I'll set its trigger to recurring check-in, but I'll leave the frequency to once per computer. Next, I'll click the scripts payload and add my script. And here's where I'll fill in the values for those three parameters that I labeled earlier. The Monterey version I want is 1231. My organization name is Talking Moose Industries, but you'll use your own. And my internet domain is talkingmoose.net. So for the reverse domain, I'll enter net.talkingmoose. 
you'd use the reverse of your own organization's internet domain. I'll click the Scope tab and scope this the same way I did those other two policies. I'll set my targets to my Monterey Compatible Max Smart Group. And I'll exclude those Macs that already have the Monterey installer cached into the Applications folder. I'll save, and that's all there is to setting it up. So then what happens? The policy takes just a few seconds to run, and all it's doing is creating two files. The first is a launch daemon that runs as soon as it's installed and every hour after that. It really shouldn't take an hour to download the Monterey installer. That launch daemon is calling a script that's also in the library folder. It's placed in a folder named for your organization. The first thing the script does is look for the Monterey installer. If it doesn't see an installer, it starts downloading it from Apple. Again, that could take 20, 30, or more minutes to complete. But once it does, it runs a quick Jamf recon to let Jamf Pro know the installer is ready. But the next hour, when the launch daemon runs again and the script does find the Monterey installer, it self-destructs. Both files from the policy are removed, and the policy won't run again because it's excluding Macs that already have the installer. Again, the advantage of this script is that it takes a few seconds to run and won't block other policies from running. And it'll keep trying every hour until it succeeds. Now, here's a useful tip for those of you who may want to use the software update command on a room full of Macs, like a lab. Find the beefiest Mac you have in the room or on your network and open the sharing pane in System Preferences. Enable the Content Caching Service. Optionally, you can deploy a configuration profile from Jamf Pro to do this for you. Restart one of your Macs to ensure it'll find the caching server immediately, and then run the software update command manually. Doing this a little ahead of time warms the cache. It makes the 12 gig Monterey installer download to your network where it will be served to the rest of your Macs from that content caching server. If you open the Activity Monitor on your content caching server and select the Cache tab, you can see whether the caching is working or not. A content caching server will likely speed up downloads for the rest of your lab Macs by 50% or more. Don't forget to turn off caching when you're done using it. That's three ways to get the Monterey installer to your Macs. You can upload it to your own distribution point to conserve your organization's internet bandwidth. A setup like this is great where servers and endpoints are all in the same local area network. Alternatively, you can send a software update command to your computers and tell them to download directly from Apple. If you do this for computers on your organization's network, consider installing Apple Content Caching servers. These are servers that sit on your network and distribute the content on behalf of Apple locally. Any Mac can be a content caching server, and you can manage them all with a configuration profile in Jamf Pro. Keep in mind, though, policies that deploy installers can take a while to run, and they'll block all other policies from running until they finish. Consider that script I showed you to hand off that responsibility to your Macs. They'll keep trying until they succeed. With the Monterey installer now cached to our Macs in the Applications folder, we're ready to look at how to run it. I'll give a little warning here. What I'm getting ready to show you is for Intel Macs only. Sort of. I'll explain what I mean when we get to Apple Silicon Macs. We're going to use the Start OS Install command. This is the tool that's going to take us from a Mac that's maybe running Catalina, Big Sur, or even an older version of Monterey, and bring us back to the equivalent of a factory reset. We can automate it through Jamf Pro to reset entire lab environments, or put it into self-service as a one-click button for technicians. All user data will be erased, and your Mac will install a fresh Monterey Mac OS. So where do we even find Start OS Install? 
Well, that's why it's been so important to get the Monterey installer on the computer. It's inside the app bundle in Contents and Resources. The full path that we'll use in our command looks something like this. I'm going to use Spotlight to open Terminal and drag the Start OS Install binary into the terminal window. I can add Usage at the end and press Return for instructions. Let's see what's included. This isn't the full list, but I've chosen the more interesting ones to look at. Each of these items is called an argument. They are options we can set when calling Start OS Install. Let's talk about some of these. When we double-click the Mac OS Monterey Installer, one of the screens we click through is Apple's License Agreement. When we run the Start OS Install command, we see the same thing if we run the command with the dash dash license argument. We see the same license when double-clicking. However, we can suppress seeing the license by adding the dash dash agreed to license argument ahead of time. We need to do that to let our automation work. In addition to installing Monterey, we might want to install one or more packages. You could add Google Chrome, Microsoft Office, or any other app that's available as an Apple installer package. So why would we want to do something like that? This would be one way support technicians could pre-install software before shipping a computer to a remote worker or student. It would avoid them having to download apps after running through automated device enrollment. They would have the experience of an out-of-box setup that includes pre-installed software. Note, you can specify multiple packages. It doesn't have to be just one. The Erase and Install argument is what makes the magic happen, though. Let's talk about what it does. Here, I have a Mac laptop running Big Sur that's been in use for a few years, and it's ready for a refresh. Over time, it's had applications installed, upgraded and removed, maybe leaving some unused pieces behind, and user accounts added with their files and preferences. We're ready to reprovision this Mac for someone else, but we want to clean Monterey OS instead. We've already delivered the Mac OS Monterey installer app to the Mac. What we want to do is run the start OS install command with the dash dash agree to license and dash dash erase install arguments. On the fly, the command takes some of the free space on the drive and creates a new partition on the disk. Then it copies the Monterey installer to it and makes that partition bootable. The Mac restarts to the new volume, and then the second installer deletes and recreates the original partition. And then when that's done, the Monterey installer places a fresh Mac OS onto the primary partition, boots the Mac to the fresh Monterey install, and removes the temporary partition. After 20 to 30 minutes, our Mac is at the setup assistant ready for enrollment. That's how the Erase Install feature works. Along with it, we can include the dash dash new volume argument to reset the hard drive name back to Macintosh HD if users have changed to something else. Or, if we use a script, we could pull information like the serial number from the Mac and rename the drive to that. Finally, the Monterey Installer supports keeping your existing volumes if you've used Disk Utility to create partitions to hold data or other operating systems. And we'll use the dash dash force quit apps argument as part of our command in case there's any running applications that might prevent the Mac from restarting. The usage command at the bottom offers some additional arguments I didn't show here that some administrators might find beneficial for advanced workflows. Let's put all this together in a policy that our end users can click in self-service. Back in Jamf Pro, under Computers and Policies, we'll create a new policy. I'll name this new policy Erase Disk and install Mac OS Monterey. I'm not going to set any triggers because I want to run this from self-service, but I will set the frequency to ongoing. Now, let's scroll down to the Files and Processes payload and configure it. In the Execute command field at the bottom, I'll put the full path to the Start OS install binary within the Monterey installer. 
Then I'll add my arguments to agree to the license, erase and install, force quit apps if necessary, and rename the disk to Macintosh HD just in case the end user changed it. Under Scope, I'll set my targets to be this smart group I created earlier that tells me the Monterey app is already cached to the computer. This policy does me no good without the installer being there. Now, let's put it in self-service so that our end users can help themselves. I'm going to add a description that warns them this policy is destructive and they need to back up their data. It's a little lengthy, but you can't over-communicate that they could lose their files if they're not careful. And I'll also enable the option to make sure they see this warning. Next, we need an icon to display in self-service. The easiest place to get one is to make it from the installer itself. I'll select the installer and choose Get Info. And then I'll click the icon near the top of the Get Info window and copy it to my clipboard. I'll use Spotlight to open the Preview app on my computer and choose File, New from Clipboard. I'm going to right-click or control-click the largest icon on the left and choose Export. I'll give it a name and save it to my desktop as a PNG file. I'm done with Preview, so I can quit it, but I don't need to save. And I'll close the Get Info window too. We're ready to add the icon to our policy. I'll click Upload, drag the file onto the Choose File button, and Upload. Now I'm ready to save my policy and test. Many older Mac models like this MacBook Air will run Monterey just fine, but they don't have Apple's T2 chips. That means they can't take advantage of Apple's newest feature called Erase All Content and Settings, which we'll talk about shortly. For now, though, they can still take full advantage of the Erase Install policy we just put together. All we need to do is open Self Service and locate our Erase and Install macOS Monterey policy. We see our description warning us to back up, and then click the button to start. In about 20 to 30 minutes, the computer will restart a few times, and then it'll finally come to the macOS Setup Assistant. Even if the Mac is an Intel Mac with a T2 chip, this policy will work just fine to upgrade from an earlier macOS version to Monterey, or simply reinstall a clean macOS Monterey. Nothing has changed. But let's talk about Apple Silicon Macs. These are not Intel machines with T2 security chips, but rather a completely different hardware architecture. And Apple has been transitioning their products to M1 chips for nearly two years. That means just about everything they're shipping today is Apple Silicon. Why is that important? Because this won't work anymore. At least, not securely. That start OS install command that we looked at earlier has a couple more important arguments that we should look at. They are user and standard input password. Basically, what this means is the startOS install command now requires an admin username and password as part of the command. Here's the command that we used in self-service just a little bit ago. It would need to be amended to look something like this. It looks simple, but there are a couple of very big problems with it. First, we need to know the password of a local admin account on the Mac. That means you'll need something like a shared IT admin account on the Mac. A lot of customers still do this, but it's a practice that's slowly dying out because it's a single point of vulnerability across your fleet if that password is ever compromised. The second problem is you can see it. It's in plain text. You'd have to include the password in your command in Jamf Pro and all of your Jamf Pro admins could then see it. And if you have just one savvy end user, just one, they can see all the management you're conducting on their Mac, and that means they can see your password too. Jamf does not endorse doing this. 
you shouldn't do it except under very specific circumstances. Desktop technicians who are preparing computers for new users can still use these policies so long as you require them to log into self-service first. They should be the only ones who can use these policies on Apple Silicon Macs. So what are you supposed to do? With Apple Silicon Macs, the days of self-service erasing and installing are over. Or rather, they were never really here. That's because Apple wants you, as an administrator, to initiate the process from your MDM. Before we look at that, let's recap. This all centers around the StartOS install binary found inside the Monterey installer app bundle. That's the whole reason we need to get the installer onto our Macs in the first place. All we need to do is add a few arguments to build out our command, including the erase install argument itself. And then we need to add this to self-service for end users to click. But there is a problem. This is only for older Intel Macs. While we could run a similar command for Apple Silicon Macs, it's not secure and not recommended. As I just mentioned, the days of self-service erasing and installing are over. We're going to have to rethink the way we do a few things. Fortunately, Apple made one of those new ways of thinking very easy. They added Erase All Content and Settings to Monterey. If that sounds familiar, it should. This is what we've been doing with our iPhones, iPads, and iPod Touches for several years. iOS has always had two partitions, one for the operating system and another for user data. The operating system partition is read-only and only changes when there's an update to install, but it never gets erased. Erase all content settings means only user data is deleted, and that makes for a quick reset, not reinstallation, of the operating system. To do the same thing on Monterey, open System Preferences, and under the System Preferences menu, choose Erase All Content and Settings. To do this from the Mac itself does require an admin account that is also a volume owner. That's usually the first person to create an account on the Mac. You'll be given plenty of opportunity before it's too late. In less than five minutes, the Mac is back at the setup assistant again. That's a lot better than waiting for the Monterey installer to download and then erase and install. So how do we do this from Jamf Pro? In Jamf Pro, I'll click Computers search for computers, and click into my computer record. Under the Management tab, I'll click the Wipe Computer button. In earlier versions of macOS, you really didn't want to do this because not only did it wipe user data, it also wiped the operating system. You had to literally reinstall the operating system using something like Internet Recovery. But with Monterey, the white button is the equivalent of Erase All Content and Settings, and it'll work so long as the Mac was enrolled through Automated Device Enrollment. And I'll point out, this applies only to Intel Macs with T2 chips and Apple Silicon Macs. The white button is still a wipe everything for those older Macs, like my 2015 MacBook Air, and it's still a wipe everything for Big Sur and earlier. You'll be prompted to clear activation lock if the end user is signed into iCloud. And if you're prompted for a six-digit lock code, just put in anything. It'll be ignored if the device has no lock. So again, what are you supposed to do about Apple Silicon Macs? My advice is that you do what it takes to get them upgraded to Monterey. Intel Macs lets you put that one button into self-service for the end user to erase the computer and start fresh. But for Apple Silicon Macs, that one button is now that wipe button in Jamf Pro. I'll say it a third time. There is no good self-service solution to let standard end users erase and reinstall their own operating system on Apple Silicon. And thanks to Erase All Content and Settings, there will probably not be another version of this webinar because, frankly, it won't be necessary. Yay for Monterey! It brings us the same way to reset our Macs that we've had for iPhones, iPads, and iPod Touches for years, and it takes less than five minutes before they're ready to enroll. We can run Erase All Content Settings on any Intel Mac with a T2 chip or any Apple Silicon Mac, 
but older Intel Macs will still need to use StartOS install. And any user can run the process from their own Mac so long as they're an admin and a volume owner. And Jamf Pro admins can do the same thing with the white button so long as the Mac was enrolled through automated device enrollment and is running Monterey. That's my presentation for you today. I hope you found it useful. We covered the Start OS install command that comes with the Mac OS installer, and we covered ways to acquire the installer. To put this into Jamf Pro, we needed a couple of smart groups that identified our Macs that meet Apple's general hardware requirements, as well as those Macs with the installer already in place. Then we scoped those to policies to deploy the installer to Macs that needed it and put the Start OS install command in self-service. Finally, we looked at Erase All Content and Settings, which is the way going forward for Apple Silicon Macs. All the code snippets that I've been using and links to resources that I've provided you are available at the first URL. It points to my Jamf blog post about the same topic from last November. If you're interested in trying my script to download the Mac OS installer in the background, you'll find it at the second URL, Background Download Script. And visit Jamf Nation Discussions to chat with me and others about putting together workflows for reprovisioning Macs. We're all here to help you succeed with Apple. Thank you, everyone, for attending today. Before we conclude, I'd like to say Jamf also offers more to help you be successful. Our professional services offer on-location or remote services to customize Jamf Pro for your environment. My old job. We also offer certification courses led by our training team. Become an expert in Jamf Pro and widen your skill sets. Finally, we have world-class support from Apple experts across the globe. We even offer 24-7 support with our premium support packages.